this week on The Startup Life. I'm going to reserve myself two timeouts during the course of this thing. And usually they'll look at me like, what are you talking about? So I'm going to call timeout. I'm going to say, okay, are we going in the direction you want this to go in? Okay. I want you to, to lead where you want to go. If we're going in places you don't want to go right now, if we've gotten off the beaten track, we can use the timeout to get back on track. All right, Startup Nation, so let's take flight with Gary Robinson, Vice Chairman and Volunteer at SCORE. The Startup Life begins now. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this new crazy mother... Hey, Startup Nation. Do you enjoy the startup life? Now you can let the world know with gear from the show. Choose from the label yourself, make your own look, and making money t-shirts to tell your story of your path of entrepreneurship. Click the link in the show notes to purchase. All right, Startup Nation. So I hope you're ready to receive some value today. We got a special guest in the building today and a very interesting direction we're going to go here on the startup life today. So we got Gary Robinson of SCORE today. How's it going, Gary? I'm doing great, Dominic. Thank you for having me. Oh, no worries. No worries. Are you ready to pour some knowledge in the startup nation today? I'm going to do my best. All right. All right. So Gary is from SCORE, and it's a very interesting organization to where their sole focus, focus excuse me, is to help small business owners and entrepreneurs really scale their business and really do right by you know, uh, their path of entrepreneurship. So, Gary, first things first, man, if you would, tell us your story, you know, of how you got to score, man. Well, I am not the normal kind of score guy. <laughs> okay. Uh, my background is in journalism, and All I right. spent 40 years in journalism. I spent 31 years at uh, the Commercial Appeal in Memphis. I retired in 2016, in October October 3rd, 2016, a date that will live in infamy, okay. at least for my wallet anyway. Gotcha. Uh, and I got involved in SCORE, oddly enough, because I was playing racquetball with a group of guys at the Bartlett Rec Center out uh, in, in Bartlett, mm-hmm. and one of the guys was a SCORE mentor, and his name is Bob Lineberry. He is now the district director for the state of Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And he saw something in me. I'm not sure what it was, but he he invited me to come meet the group. And he said I might be interested in joining. And if I wasn't, then it was no big deal. But I said, well, right now all I'm doing is is I'm working out and I'm hanging out with the grandkids and doing odd jobs around the house. So let me uh, let me go check this out and see what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And I. I thought it was a good group. I, I liked their mission, and I wanted to find out more about it, and I've gotten very involved in the last 16 months, mm-hmm. and I love it. It's a group that, that really cares about the community. Absolutely. And we really want to help not only people who want to start businesses, but we, we want to help small businesses who want to scale up and, and get more business. Mm-hmm. And it's just a, a, a great way to give back to the community. I am not... The normal score guy, as I said, I've never owned a business. I spent money at the newspaper. The advertising people made the money. I spent the money. I was in sports for a long time. Right. We sent reporters all over the place. Mm-hmm. I spent their hard-earned money. So <laughs> I didn't know much about businesses at the time. I know a whole lot more now. Uh, not anywhere near most of our of our volunteers, but I know enough to help a little bit. Gotcha. And it's it's a it's a great group. But I am not the normal score. Guy. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, clearly he saw something in you, man. And we in the Memphis community are very grateful for what you do for small business owners and entrepreneurs, you know, all the like. Now, Startup Nation, I know not all of you are here in Memphis, Tennessee, but no, there are score offices all over the country, right, Gary? There are yes. three, more than 300 chapters. Uh, yes. 305, I think, is, a, is the count the last time I saw. Mm-hmm. We have somewhere in the vicinity of 10,500 volunteers wow. nationally. Mm-hmm. Uh, some big cities, New York, Chicago, have multiple chapters within the city because the city is so large. We have a chapter here in Memphis. There's also one in DeSoto County that has just started out in the okay. last uh, year or two. 
So um, we handle everything in Memphis, uh, West Memphis, out into Western Tennessee, mm-hmm. DeSoto County. We pretty much leave to the DeSoto people, but uh, that's where we are. We are all about West Tennessee and Memphis and Shelby County. I hear that. I hear that. Thank you for sharing that. So I know you, you say you're not the typical you know, score mentor or person or whatever the case may be, but once you got involved in the score and stuff like that, what was it that, like, you know what, I'm right where I need to be? What's that's that a good. Moment? That's a good question. Mm-hmm. Um, some days I'm still wondering. Okay, and I don't mean that as as a joke. I gotcha. mean, I, I because I look at myself still after 40 years in newspapers as mm-hmm. a as a newspaper guy. Gotcha. And we don't get many requests for newspaper help. Gotcha. Obviously, although newspapers are falling off a cliff as we speak, <laughs> uh, it's a it's just not the normal career path to go. But I found that. Because in my professional career, one of the most important things I could do was ask questions, that that's what I bring to mentoring, mm-hmm. is I like to, I, I, what I call brainstorming. I, I mean, we, we all call it mentoring, and, and everybody has a little different way to go about it. But I like to, to take a client and, and listen to their story. Tell me about your business. Tell me about what you want your business to be. Tell me about what you're doing now and how you think that, that angles toward getting you to a new business, and then because they are approaching it from one way and I'm approaching it from somebody who hasn't heard their story before, I can ask them questions and sort of make them think about their business in a different light. So to me, I always refer to it as brainstorming. We just sort of bounce ideas off each other, and, and then I might say, hey, have you thought about this? And a lot of times they say yes, but sometimes they go, no, that's, that's really interesting. I hadn't thought about it that way. And then we kind of go from there. So it's mm-hmm. it's really cool to see the light bulb go on sometimes. I and I, I've had I've had clients who were um, who were just not ready yet. You know, they they thought they were at step four, shall we say, and they were really at step one. And there were a couple of steps they needed to get to before they jumped into the pond. Right. And I didn't discourage them, but I asked them questions, and in asking the questions and them putting voice to it, which is not something they had they do. Normally, because they're just bouncing around in their heads, these ideas they have. Right now, they're talking about it. Go, oh, you know, I, yeah, I'm. I need to do these things before I can get to get to that right. step. The right. light bulb comes on, and then we can talk a month down the line, two months down the line, whatever it is, mm-hmm. and see how they've gotten along, how they progress. So it's really kind of cool to see that light bulb come on. Whether it's a lower level thing or an upper level thing, oh wow, that's I hadn't thought of that, and then they can kind of take it from there. Gotcha, gotcha. you. Thank you for sharing that, Gary. And Startup Nation, if 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 Score you think can benefit you and your business, make sure you go to Score.org, or if you're here in Memphis, ScoreMemphis.org, and we have the link in the show notes for easy access. So actually, actually, Memphis.Score.org. Oh, Memphis.Score.org. Right. We'll, we'll get that squared away. Thank you for sharing. Don't worry. That, Gary. I appreciate you can, that. You can request a mentor. You okay. can look at our resources. We have a ton of resources in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can get our workshop list. Uh, the, it's a great website. All right, cool. And the, once again, the link is there in the show notes for easy access. So, Gary, you talked about it a little bit. You know, you, you spent almost 31 years at the Commercial Appeal, man. And, and so, you know, what about, has there been a time where you're mentoring somebody and something comes up and you're like, you know what, this happened at the paper. I can totally help you with that. Have you have any stories like that? That's a good question. Mm-hmm. Um a lot of what I do sort of translates a little bit into marketing okay, uh, and social media. Sure. The last eight years at the paper, I spent uh, what I described it as dragging the newsroom, kicking and screaming into the <laughs> digital age. Gotcha. And it's a whole different idea than what newspapers were used to. You, know, sure. you came in and you wrote a story and you went to dinner and you got something to drink and you came back and you looked at it again and then you turned it in. And mm-hmm. No, I mean, when it's a news story, you have to have things... Right now, right. You know, sure. I, my deadline was now, and my next deadline is now. Right. It just keeps. It, you know, it never ends. Mm-hmm. So that's how I think about things. Okay. Uh, also, I'm able to look at websites and see how efficient they are, mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, with a website, I, I rank websites three different ways, Dominic. I think the number one, obviously, is a really good website. Mm-hmm. Number two is no website. Okay. <laughs> Number three is a bad website. Fair enough. I think no website beats bad website Makes every sense. time. 
And if you are an entrepreneur and you have a website, and just the fact that you know you needed a website so you got one together and then you didn't worry about it is not the way you want to go. Mm-hmm. But what you want to be able to do is, is stand away from the website and look at it and go, if I'm a customer, am I able to do the things that I, as the business owner, want the customer to be able to do easily? If I'm selling things, do I make it easy to buy things on my website? If I'm, if I, my goal is to get information from you, is it easy for me to do, easy for the customer to do that? Mm-hmm. And if it isn't, then how do I make that right? So a lot of things I do before I even meet with a client is to look when they have a website is to look at their website and be able to tell them things that I've had as first impressions of their website. Right. Uh, and also because I'm an editor at heart, when there are typos and when there are grammatical mistakes, mm-hmm. uh, I point them out because, uh, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but I look at a website that's filled with typos and go, well, they're not very professional. That's very true. So as mentors, we don't do things for people. Mm-hmm. We try to help them do things for themselves. Right. One thing I will do for people is I will look at their website and I will show them things that they need to fix mm-hmm. because... It's just what I do. I, right. I, I can't help myself. Can, can I tell you a quick story? Go for it, yes. When my wife was pregnant with our older son, mm-hmm. which is now 39 years ago, I'm sorry to say, <laughs> she brought home paperwork from the doctor. There were typos and grammatical errors in the form she had to fill, fill out. Wow. I fixed them. <laughs> I drew lines through and I edited. My wife got mad. She didn't get mad at the doctor. She got mad at me. Gotcha. She goes, I have to take this stuff back to them. And my response was, well, good. Tell them to fix it. <laughs> because I I'm, I'm, I care about the language. For sure. And, I mean, I spent most of my time. I, I wrote for a while, but I spent most of my time as an editor. And I care about the language, and I want it to be right. Because we're the we're the newspapers are sort of the last bastion of, of the language. Mm-hmm. If you don't get it right, then if you can't get simple things like spelling right, then how can I trust you to get something else right? Right. I had to tell reporters that you, know, you can't get this right. How do I know that that's right over there? That makes so, sense. And it's the same thing with, with, with businesses and websites. Get it right, make it easy to access, and make it readable. Gotcha. I hear that. Thank you for sharing that. And that brings up an interesting point because a lot of times, you know, there are many entrepreneurs out there who feel like, you know, only another entrepreneur can help me. They only know, you know, they, they're the only ones who can help me, right? But I think you bring up an interesting point that is also good to get that outside perspective. Not that you're on the outside looking in, but I think the fact that you come from your expertise in, in the paper and stuff like that and editing, stuff like that, when you talk about websites, that's very important. And getting the language right is extremely important, like you said, especially when you're trying to sell a company or yourself, or whatever the case may be. So thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. Well, I think there are also, I mean, in our group, there's... There's a there's a, a good breadth of knowledge. Absolutely, okay? it's very wide for sure. And if you're starting out, if you want to start a restaurant, we have people who've done that, mm-hmm. and you know, being able to sit down with them and you know, presenting your plan and having them poke holes in an encouraging way because we're sure. always positive, we're always encouraging. But you need to know these things. Yes, you know, the fact that you have been a waiter at a restaurant or a waitress at a restaurant does not necessarily mean that you are set up to own, to own and operate a restaurant. Just right. because you've served food doesn't mean you're ready. It doesn't mean you're not. Right. But there are a lot of things you need to know that you maybe don't know yet. So mm-hmm. and it's the same way in a lot of businesses. It's great that people have passions. Right. But they need to know what the business end of it is, too. So I, one thing I love about the group is that there's a wide variety of, of knowledge that we can draw on. And that's how, if you were to uh, request a mentor, uh, you can fill out a little form on our on our website, memphis.score.org. Yes. Shame, shameless plug. Link is there in the show notes. <laughs> Link is there in the show notes. Uh, shameless plug department. And then our administrator will send you a note. And it'll say, could you tell us a little bit, about, a little bit more about your business and what you're trying to get accomplished? Because he wants to get you hooked up with the right mentor from us. We have mm-hmm. about... 13 or 14 people who are mentoring at the moment in SCORE, in in the Memphis chapter, Mm -hmm. and they have all kinds of different backgrounds. So if you were going to start an insurance company, we wouldn't want to hook you up with somebody who is a restaurant specialist. Right. We want you to hook up with a guy who knows about insurance. 
So if you if you need help with marketing, we want you to talk to the people who know about marketing, not right. somebody who knows about business plans. Right. So that's how basically you start off with you. You, know, you put in a request. We ask you a couple of questions. We hook you up and we go from there. Gotcha. Thank you for sharing that. So there at SCORE, you, you boast many success stories, right? And I know on your website, on the SCORE's website here in Memphis, you, are, you have a blog, which I've seen that you've posted on there from time to time. Uh, but there's one in particular one where you tell us about the story about Christopher Washington. What a great kid. Tell us that story about Chris. Christopher um, is a smart young man. Mm -hmm. he's, he's done great with his business, which is called Chris on Call. Okay. Um, Chris, as his mother described it, uh, and I know I'm not speaking out of school. I've written about it, mm -hmm. um, was what his mother referred to as word blind. Okay. Uh, which I think is a form of dyslexia. Mm -hmm. So basically, Chris could not read. Smart kid, his mind and his eyes would not let him put all that stuff together to allow him to read. Right. Uh, industrious young guy, but he would get hired in a job, and they'd find out he couldn't read, and they'd put him doing manual labor. That's not what he wanted to do. Right. He's smart. He's a, I mean, not that you can't be smart and do manual labor, but he was, he was a smart guy, and that's not what he wanted to do with his life. And he started thinking about the times that he worked with his grandparents, and he would he would take them on errands. He would drive them places. He'd take, drive them to the store because they were older. He would drive them to the doctor's office. He would run to the store, and, and you know he he did errands for them and drove things. And I wonder if I can make a business out of this. Mm. And he started with that, and he has grown and grown, and he has he has cars, and he has he was the he when the uh, Martin Luther King Jr. celebration, the 50 year celebration came last year of the assassination. Right. He was the, he had the city contract to transport VIPs when they came into town. Nice. Uh, he will take you anywhere you need to go. He has, he has VIP services. He has just, you know, if still, if you want him to go to the store for you, he will do that. Or he has people who will go do that. He is a, a great young man. I've, I've, I've known him, like I said, I've only been with SCORE for 16 months. I've met him last January, a year ago January, and he was he talked to our group with his mom, who still did a lot of help for him. Uh, she worked in Louisiana, but she answered phones for him, that kind of thing. And she did a lot of the talking, and Chris was pretty shy. And since then, I have seen him at four or five different events and he's just coming out of his shell more and more every time. And he is, he is a confident young guy, mm -hmm. and he's making a, a, a great business out of out of something that you wouldn't have thought could be a good business for sure to have. But sure. he is he is uh, uh, I can't speak highly enough of him. And I think it's ChrisOnCall dot com is his website mm -hmm. for for all the different services he has. But he is he is terrific. He is one of our great success stories. Gotcha. Thank you for sharing that and sharing Chris's story. So let me ask you this really quick, just a quick follow-up. Because, you know, when you talk about Chris and, and you see these other success stories there in SCORE, what does that do for you, Gary? Because I, I can see when you talk about Chris, you kind of light up a little bit. So when you see people, they come to you for help, and then you see them kind of, uh, you no, know, they take that advice and they grow and then you nur help nurture them. What does that do for you personally? It makes me feel like I'm making a difference. Okay. Now, I haven't had the kind of success stories like Chris is mm -hmm. or like Tabitha Birdsong is who has the candy apple business that's okay. grown so great. Mm -hmm. uh, because I haven't been doing it all that long. Okay. I'm hoping that as I go along, I will have some success stories that tout of my own. Mm -hmm. But the fact that our group is able to do that. For sure makes me feel like like I'm not wasting my time, that I'm in a group that really cares about making a difference in this town. Mm -hmm. That's That, to me, uh, is is worth all the time and the effort. My wife keeps asking me, so are you sure this is a volunteer job? <laughs> but it is. I mean, right. everybody in SCORE is a volunteer except the ones in Washington at the national office. Gotcha. Everybody uh, from the regional vice presidents on down are all volunteers. So mm -hmm. out of the 10,500 Volunteers, they're just about all volunteers. There are very few people who are getting getting paid at all. But it's it's a, a, a group that I really care about a lot. And it's a, it's a group that has, that everybody has their, has each other's backs. I hear that. That's, uh, to me, that makes a big difference. Because in, in where I came from, in the newspaper world, we were all, in the sports department especially, we were mm -hmm. all a group that that cared about each other. And we all worked hard. There were, you know, there were people weren't calling in sick all the time, and mm -hmm. it was it, what they cared about was doing their job and being able to be in position to do their job. I tell a story that we have. The, there's one thing that we charge for, Dominic, okay. all year long. It's called our boot camp. 
Okay. And, and it happens every October at the Germantown Great Hall. And what it is, we put four workshops together. And it's basically a, a, a business plan workshop, a finance workshop, a social media workshop, and then a QuickBooks or finance workshop, uh, uh, how to do your own financing. For sure. Okay. And so we charge $25. We bring lunch and we can rent the hall. And it's, you know, it's a big thing rather than just an individual workshop. Mm-hmm. Uh, the night before the workshop, the guy who's going to do QuickBooks for us, who is not a score guy, he's just a QuickBooks guy, gotcha. but he, he does workshops for us, was in Denver on business. And he he texted our workshop chairman, Arun, said, I'm stuck. I can't get back tomorrow. I had already put my phone on the charger. I was already in bed. Gotcha. I didn't see any of this. Right. I woke up the next morning, and the first thing I see is that email. I go, oh, Arun, who is, who is just terrific at, at herding all the cats you have to do to get these workshops to work. Right. He's got to be pulling out his hair. The very next email was from our treasurer, Beverly Anderson, said, I can take care of this for you. I can't do QuickBooks, but I can do an hour on financing, no problem. She didn't have anything prepared. Gotcha. She just did it. She got up and did an hour and, did, and had some slides she could show people. Here's how you take care of your books, and here are the do's and the don'ts. But it was like a snap. It was, I'll take care of this for you. Gotcha. And that's that's just how we operate. Mm-hmm. You know, we, if... if if you and I are both working on a case, I need you to do something. I go, hey, can you help me out? No problem. Gotcha. And we're all we all help each other out. I hear that. I hear that. Thank you for sharing that. And if you want to check out the link for that workshop in October, we have a link there in the show notes for easy access. Um, go ahead. What were you about to say? No, something? I was oh. going to say we have a workshop link on memphis.score.org, so okay. you can see the upcoming ones. I don't know if we have the work. I don't know if we have the boot camp up okay. yet, but I know that we have we have rented the hall and we're getting that. Organized. Gotcha. Uh, we have workshops planned out for the most of the rest of the year, and all the workshops are free. Gotcha. All the individual workshops are free. The mm-hmm. only thing we ever charge for is the boot camp. We have most of the workshops at the uh, the Benjamin Hooks Library. Okay, and they're very well attended. That's what tells me that we're we're also making a difference mm-hmm. because so many people are coming to our workshops. Mm-hmm. We had we start off with five simple steps. There are five workshops at the start of the year. Sort of like okay, we're going to start the new year off. And here's what you're going to do if you're interested in getting it. The first one was just sort of a general get acquainted. Then there's business plans and there's, you know, getting money from the bank and yada, yada, yada. Gotcha. And the first one had 134 people at it. Okay. Free. There. I mean, it's, you don't have to go. Right. And the business plan, had, well, anyway, we've, the, we've had four so far that have had a total of more than 300 people. Total. Mm-hmm. So these are people who are just, they're craving to learn this stuff. They want to find out, they want to be able to better themselves, whether you're, a business owner and trying to get better or you want, you know, I don't want to be doing this job anymore. I want to do what I want to do. Right. And, and it's, uh, it's just terrific. Gotcha. Great information. Gotcha. And we're going to have some of those dates for you later on Startup Nation for you to check out uh, those workshops as well. So Gary, let me ask you this because, you know, you're here in the Memphis chapter and, you know, uh, entrepreneurial space is kind of, it's kind of growing here a little bit, right? And Absolutely. So, and, and so let me ask you this. What do you hope to see in the next five years for the Memphis entrepreneurial space? That's a great question. I like, uh, I think that, that any city revolves around its small businesses. Okay. I think that if, if it's certainly nothing against the big businesses because businesses like AutoZone and FedEx and, and IP, I mean, they have, they have so many, they hire so many people and they have so many people who are on their staff. It's, that's wonderful to have. Mm -hmm. But if you don't see driving down the street, if you don't see mom and pop stores or you don't see brick and mortar stores selling t-shirts or hair salons or whatever, your town is going to be a bunch of empty spaces. Right. And this is small businesses are what drive the economy of a, of a, of a city. And Memphis is no different. I think Memphis is has gotten a lot better and it's going to continue to get better. It's people talking about Nashville as, as being the, the Tennessee place. Mm-hmm. I don't have anything against Nashville. <laughs> eh, okay. I don't have anything against Nashville. Gotcha. But Memphis is, is just brimming with that kind of spirit and they mm-hmm. want to do better. I mean, we talk about Memphis being a poor city mm-hmm. and that is one reason. I mean, not every chapter of SCORE does everything for free like we do. Right. But we think that in our particular market, that's really important to be able to do so people can come in and learn and be able to better themselves. Mm-hmm. I just think that it's going to continue to grow. As long as people have ideas, they're going to want to try to find out ways to, to 
market them and capitalize on them, make a living out of them. Right. You know, they don't want to do the jobs they're doing now, whether it's sitting behind a desk, whether it's answering phone calls, whether it's working in a convenience store. They have things that they want to do, and they think that they could be good at. I could make a living out of this, maybe. Right. It's a passion, you know, but and, and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't, but but you won't know until you try. For sure, for sure, for sure. Thank you for sharing that. So let me ask you this, you know, right before we go to break, well, not quick. So you was on a conference call of some sort, right? You have some interesting facts and figures you wanted to kind of share with Startup Nation. You want to do that right now? Well, thank you for that. Thank <laughs> no you worries. for that lead-in. I no appreciate worries. that. <laughs> This was a, uh, a SCORE national webinar that I sat in on about, uh, about clients and what they like, and, and uh, it, it provided a lot of information. And what the numbers I have for you, uh, Dominic, are comparing 2010 to 2018. Okay. And the t- fiscal year 2018 ended in September 30th of 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, in 2010, 56% of the clients were what we called champions who would who would go out and talk well about the mentoring experience that they received from SCORE. Okay. In 2018, that number was 71%. Mm. Uh, there were 25% that we called disconnected. They thought we did, they did not get what they were looking for in 2010. In 2018, that number is down to 15%. Okay. Uh, we talk a lot in SCORE about the one and done rate. Now, this is not not one year of college and then moving on to the NBA. Gotcha. But it is something that we deal with a lot, which is people come in and they, they meet with us one time and then they don't come back. Mm-hmm. And some of it is because we've taken care of the things they needed and some of it is we didn't resonate with them or they've just moved on to other things. Mm-hmm. Uh, we try to do our best. In fact, one of the most important things I do in my first meeting with a, with a client is to set up the second meeting with the client. Okay. Again, we don't get paid for it. We don't get extra bonus money or anything for doing that. But it's just, if I meet with you twice, we sort of have a relationship going. If I meet with you once and you don't come back and I haven't taken care of things, gotcha. then I didn't take care of things. Our one done rate has dropped by 10, dropped 10%. It went from 70% to 60%. Mm-hmm. Um, now, this is interesting. In 2010, of all the met- clients we had, 15% were already in business. 2018, 54% were already in business. Okay. They, are, they, they came looking for help to grow their business. And I think that's an interesting point, if I may interject sure. real quick, because I think that's an interesting point, because it's not necessarily Startup Nation for those of you who are getting ready to start a business. If you've already established your business and you're looking for that continual help, SCORE is there to help as well. Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. You may be doing everything yourself, and you want to figure out a way to not do everything yourself. Absolutely. It's time to hire people. Right. Uh, one of the things we I, I like to talk about is the fact that you need to, as a business owner, you need to be able to spend time working on your business, mm-hmm. not just in your business. Right. Because if you're working in your business every day, then you have no time to grow your business. Right. If you're doing the things that make the business work all the time, you can't figure out, you, you can't come up with a vision to make yourself bigger. Gotcha, okay? gotcha. And Startup Nation, we do apologize for the ambulance you just kind of heard in the background. We're in the medical district here in Memphis. so that, I thought that they were coming for me. I thought, they, <laughs> I thought you'd, you'd call the police on me. I'm no, not sure. Not at all. It's not at all. It's great. Too, too uh, great a content to do that. So we'll go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, workshops. In 2010, uh, the SCORE chapters did 9,200 workshops. Wow. In 2018, it was 13,300. Wow. Uh, volunteers, 8,500 and 10,700, 500, or 10,750. Mm-hmm. And part of the, the reason for the increase in all these, these numbers is in 2011, they instituted something called Slate. And all mm-hmm. SCORE mem- uh, members know about Slate. We're trained in Slate. And what Slate is, is, is it's an acronym for five things that, that you are supposed to always bring to the table when you're doing this. And the S is to stop and suspend judgment. So you don't come in with a preconceived notion. You know, if, if somebody comes in and said, I want to be the first man on Mars. Well, you might look at that and go, yeah, well, <laughs> let's find out about this. But you want to at least listen to their plan. So For you sure. stop and you suspend judgment. L is listen and learn. Mm-hmm. A is assess and analyze. T is te- uh, test ideas and teach with tools. We have a lot of tools. And E is expectation setting and encouraging the dream. Mm-hmm. One of the things I do when I mentor, and again, you're talking to somebody who's not mentored like, you know, we have people who have been around for 15 or 20 years. They've mentored hundreds of people. Right. I said that the last session I did with, with a, a new client, I said, I want to set expectations for you on the front end. And the expectation I, that I want you to have 
is that when you walk out of here and you get in your car and you're driving home, I don't want you to hit yourself in the head and go, I didn't get this answered. I didn't find out what I really came to do. Because what we do is we talk. Just like you and I are having a conversation. Right. I have a conversation with a, with a client. And conversations, as you know, can go in all kinds of different ways. We can bounce off. You know, I might tell you a story about my grandkids or mm-hmm. you know, some goofy thing like that. And then you might tell me, you know, oh, yeah, I have a kid who does this. And then pretty soon we're you know meandering all over the place. Right. I want to make sure that you have gotten your questions answered or we're on the way to getting your questions answered. Mm-hmm. I said, with that in mind, I said, I'm going, to, I'm going to reserve for myself two timeouts during the course of this thing. And usually they'll look at me like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to call timeout and I'm going to say, okay, are we going in the direction you want this to go in? Okay. Because I want you to direct the direction for this, if mm-hmm. direct the direction. Gotcha. I want you to, to lead where you want to go. If we're going in places you don't want to go right now, if we've gotten off the beaten track, we can use the timeout to get back on track. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, I do the same thing. Did we get where you wanted to go? Do you feel like this is a good thing? Here are things that we've talked about that you need to do because I try to give them homework when they leave. For sure. There are things I, you, know, you need to do market research or you need to think about this or you need to hear ways that you can build a marketing plan. Here are ways you build a business plan. Let's meet in a month and see where you are. So then I'm building the relationship and I always try to follow up immediately with an email and then touch base a couple of times so that at the end, you, know, you and I have a, more than just you know, I talked to this old guy. Right. We've talked about things that make a difference to them, and I've tried to help them a little bit, and we've we've gone down a, a street that helps them get to where they want to go. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for bringing up the slate methodology, because I actually had that right there to ask for. Look at that. I actually we, had we that. We did not rehearse this, folks. We did not. Start up nation. We did not do this. <laughs> we did not. So I appreciate you sharing that. Last question before we go to break, and I'm, I, I want to – and it's kind of a follow-up to that disconnected rate that you talked about sure. earlier, right? So, you know, what do you think that score figured out from 2010 to 2018 to kind of get that number down? So I guess what I'm saying is what were some of those misconceptions you think people were coming to score with and, you know, to kind of go towards, you know, getting that number down? Like, what do you think those misconceptions about score are? I can tell you that the numbers that I gave you, mm-hmm. which are comparing 2010 and 2018, right? changed when Slate came into play in 2011. Okay. And I think that that is, it is, it changed everything. Gotcha. Again, I'm only speaking from, this is not institutional knowledge for For me. This is what I'm learning as I'm going along. For sure. But this was a a very educational webinar for me because I sat there and really opened my eyes. Um, These things are things that we all, we we all think about every time. Mm -hmm. I, it's sort of ingrained because I, I think that if you're going to work with somebody, if you come in with a preconceived notion, you're not going to help them. Gotcha. So, as I'm sure you've done with people, and, mm-hmm. and I've done, you know, I try to help people along. I want the first thing you do is listen to them. Right. You know, what's what? What is your problem? Not hey, what's your problem? <laughs> but tell me about your problem. Tell me what what what's causing all this, and let's see if we can figure that out. Well, we do this in a business sense. You know, sure. I want, I can't get. Financing, I have this idea, but the banks are turning me down. Mm. Or um, I have, I have, I'm doing okay, but I ought to be doing a whole lot better, and I can't figure out a good marketing plan to do that. I don't have an idea how to build a marketing plan. So okay, well, let's talk about that. And we have such an amazing amount of resources on our site, and we have that are available for free uh, that we can usually get to the the heart of the problem. Gotcha, gotcha. Did that answer your question? No, no, it does, it does. Because I think a lot of times, you know, people have, you know, preconceived notions about SCORE or any other organization trying to help them with their business. Like, you know, do they want a piece of my business? Do they want equity or something like that? And so I think that's important to we point We never, um, we, we can't do that. Our, our, right. our uh, code of ethics would prevent us from doing anything like For that. Sure. If you came in with... Uh, trying to make your car dealership better. I, I mean, there's nothing I can do. Uh, I, I can't get a big discount on a car from you. Gotcha. Can't, can't do that. Gotcha. And uh, we just, we're, we're unscrupulous. I mean, we're scrupulous that right, way. Right, right. We don't, can't operate that way. Because, for sure. And, and we, we, we will, for instance, you're looking for a bank loan. Mm-hmm. Okay? Well, we will give you a list of banks. We will not say, 
go to Joe. Right. We will say, here are six or eight banks that are known to do uh, well loaning money to small businesses. If you can't make that happen, here are a couple of alternative lending places. Gotcha. Uh, and I don't know if you've if you've dealt with alternative lending yes. on here, mm-hmm. but uh, like Travis Hughes at, at Pathway Lending mm-hmm. is a is a good uh, resource for that. But that's a way to go as well. And but I, we wouldn't say go to Joe, or we wouldn't say you need an account. Go to go to you know Joanne. Gotcha. We would give you a list of six or eight. It's up to you to pick them out for sure. Because we don't. At the end of the day, we don't want you to come back. So I went to your banker and did something bad happened. Right. You know this is. Here's a list of people that we that we think are would do a good good job. Do your homework and see how you want to you know who you want to pick. For sure, we do that with with uh, with banks. We do that with accountants. We do that with insurance agents. We do that. There are probably a couple other lists we have as well. Gotcha. So uh, it just we 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 keep those lists handy because we we you're going to want them. Mm-hmm. You know, at some point you're going to want to know. Okay, I'm at the point to I, I need to go ask for money. What 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 should I do? Actually, the first thing we do is say, go to your bank, because you have a relationship Absolutely. with your bank. Yes, and people don't think they have relationships just because they have money. But you know, you know, I have a savings account with the bank. Well, by definition, you have a relationship with yes. the bank, mm-hmm. and they know you a little bit. They might not be able to call your name when you walk in the door, but they know they can call you up and go, "Oh, there you are." Right. Now, it doesn't mean they're going to lend you money, but that's usually the first place to start. Yes, that that, that is an excellent point, Startup Nation. That's one thing we, we preach on the Startup Life a lot when you're trying to get lending or whatever. You already have an established relationship with that bank. And so, like you said, they may not know you by name, but, you know... Uh, the, the thinking is like you know you're least likely to default on a loan if you have all these other things as well. So that's, sure. a, that's one of those sure. things that they that kind of yeah. Take at the end of the day, the, mm-hmm. the bank only cares about one thing. That's true. Getting their money back. Yep. You know, and that's <laughs> you know, I really like these alternative lending places like mm-hmm. like Pathway, uh, for instance. Uh, just got last year got a fifteen million dollar infusion from mm-hmm. several banks in town, including Pinnacle and I think First Tennessee, mm-hmm. to help lend money to people that they themselves can't lend money to. Gotcha. And the difference, as I'm sure you've been through, you know, talking with, with the, uh, your audience about, mm-hmm. is you may not be bankable with a bank, but you may be bankable with an alternative lending. The difference is you end up paying a little bit more in interest right? because you're a higher risk. Right. Well, I understand that and from mm-hmm. the bank's perspective because, again, at the end of the day, they want their money back. They don't want to, you know, they don't want loans that, that people don't pay back. For sure. But... For the for the customer, it gives them a chance. Well, and the bank won't do this, but maybe this group will do that. Mm-hmm. You still have to have some money on your own, absolutely. But being able to have a, an alternative makes a difference sometimes. Gotcha. Thank you for sharing that. So, Startup Nation, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. How you like being on the Startup Life so far, Gary? Oh, I'm just talking away, aren't I? <laughs> you, asked, you asked really good questions. Thank, Thank you, you for that. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, Startup Nation, so I hope you're getting great value from Gary's content, but we got to pay a few bills. Once again, my name is Dominic Lawson, and you're listening to The Startup Life. Hey, business owner, the Startup Life reach is growing. Wouldn't you like your business to grow with it? Reach out to us to advertise on the Startup Life. You can reach us at 901-857-4818, or you can email me at dominic at askowlsolutions.com. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, this is a great music to have break on, but wouldn't this break sound a lot better with the same music, but your business being advertised on it? Need more content from the Startup Life, you say? You can now sign up for the Startup Life All Access Pass on the Binge Podcast Network's 
Patreon page. There is exclusive content written by yours truly, video content where I share even more of my business philosophies, and whatever crazy content I can think of out of that crazy head of mine. And at only $5 a month, yeah, $5 a month, this is more content for you, Startup Nation, to really get ahead of your competition. So instead of upsizing that meal at your favorite fast food joint, you can now invest in yourself on your path to entrepreneurship. Click the link in the show notes to sign up. All right, Startup Nation, so let's continue. So Gary, you know, we talk about, you know, here at the Startup Life, the importance of, you know, professional development, always sharpening the saw, always getting better as an entrepreneur. That's something we preach all the time. And SCORE has many seminars, webinars, workshops, and other opportunities to do exactly that. Share with Startup Nation, you know, some of those avenues to, to get that professional development. And who are the professionals that you bring in to lead, though? Because I think that's pretty fascinating, too. Well, thank you. I appreciate you asking that. Mm-hmm. Um, we have, we will have about 25 workshops this year. Most of which, uh, I think I mentioned, are at the Benjamin Hooks Central Library. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of them that we will do at the Germantown Public Library if we are expecting a small crowd. But it is a small room, and if you get more than about 20 or 25 people, it gets really crowded. So uh, the Public Library has been a great partner for us. Uh, They're even putting us on their, their... electric billboard, electronic oh, nice. billboard outside. And I think that started this year. I think that's really had a, uh, a help, a benefit for us getting people who are driving along going, oh, look at that. That's happening at 6 o'clock. Right. I could go do that. Right. Um, but we have, we bring in people, some of the workshops we do ourselves and some of them we bring in. We brought in a gentleman from First Tennessee to talk about financing. Uh, we brought in a uh, delightful young lady from Rocket Fuel, which is a local uh, digital marketing agency, mm-hmm. to talk about social media. Right. Uh, and you can tell that, that these people do good jobs because at the end, there are people crowding around them at the end. When it's mm-hmm. 7.30, it's time to go, and they are, <laughs> you know, we have a, a local lawyer uh, used to be a SCORE mentor or a SCORE cl- uh, uh, volunteer. I don't think he is right now, mm-hmm. but he does intellectual property. Mm-hmm. Uh, he does two of those a year because one isn't enough. Right. Uh, he. Sure. I know the first first one he did last year, he had 90 minutes of material. He did about 45 because hands kept going up. Right. And, and the f- questions are always start off this way. So what if... <laughs> <laughs> and then you know, then he'd go. Well, you need a copyright, or you need this, or you need that. Right. Um, we start the year with five simple steps. Uh, it's a simple steps program. Okay. And they start off. The first one this year was about was just a general. Say you want to start a business, and then we did uh, building a business plan, which is so crucial. Mm-hmm. I know you've done. Yes. Shows on that. Yes. Uh, and let me stick in my my two cents on that. that I, I look at a business plan as a GPS system. I hear that. For your business. Not only does it help you get money if you need it, but because you're doing projections six months, a year, or two years down the line, in six months you pull out your business plan and look at it and go, hey, I'm doing a lot better than I thought. I need to make these changes. Or... I'm not doing as well as I thought. I need to make these changes. Right. So it it helps you as you're going through, figure out where you are now compared to where you thought you were going to be. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. And Startup Nation, you know we talk all the time that your business plan is a breathing, living document. So there's going to be times where you're going to need to make those tweaks and stuff like that. Don't just put it in the filing cabinet or or stick it in in, in a folder on your laptop. (laughs) Keep keep looking at it. For sure. So we do... um, Business plans, and the third one is uh, how to get money from a bank. The fourth one, which is coming up, it'll come up before this is posted, was mm-hmm. about uh, contracts and HR management. Mm-hmm. And then the fifth one was about sales and marketing. Gotcha. So those are the five. It's sort of a get you started kind of kind of a quick synopsis thing. Mm-hmm. Our workshops are all 90 minutes. They go from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Uh, you can register online. You don't have to. You can walk up, and we will take you just as happily as if you registered. <laughs> the only thing, the only difference is if you register online, your name's going to be on a, on a spreadsheet that we have that you can initial. If you're not, we need your name and your email address right. so we can get you in our constant contact. Right. Sales and marketing is March 21st. Uh, April 1st is an ADP. Uh, the ADP people are coming in to talk about payroll, HR, and tax and benefit administration. Uh, April 18th, intellectual property. And May 6th is QuickBooks. Those are the only ones I put down. I, I, gotcha. we have, you, have, you can see more of them on our, on our uh, 
workshop page at mm-hmm. memphis.score.org. Absolutely, memphis.score.org. The link is there in the show notes. But our, we will have a guy who does QuickBooks. We had a guy from uh, who, who is not a Google employee but goes around the country and does Google workshops about how to help your small business using Google. Mm. And he did that in late February. And did a terrific job. People were just very engaged with that. People were engaged with all these. And because these are the things that people want to know. And he was, we took a break from Simple Steps. We started interrupting Simple Steps in the middle. And, and and we had the Google guy because that was when he was available to come in. Right. And we had 75 or 80 people at that. So uh, we try to touch base on a lot of different things. For sure. And as, as the year goes on, we will do more. And I'd like to do even more than that. I mean, it just... It's just, uh, it's a load to keep going. Oh, I mean, absolutely. You, it, 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 our education guy, Arun, is uh, is pulling his hair out a lot, making sure that everything's <laughs> in the right place. Oh, did I touch base with him? Did I touch base with the library? Right. But he is so good at it. I was at a national uh, uh, national convention for school last year, and I was talking about how good he was, and people were trying to recruit him. Mm. I said, keep your hands off. Right. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> we're, we're keeping him around. Right. Uh, appreciate you sharing that for sure. So let me let me ask you this because, you know, one of the things that I, I see people ask all the time, like, you know, score is great and these, and these workshops are great and these seminars are great, but why are the workshops free? So it's like, you know, like a lot of people ask that. And so I guess I'm, I'm curious, do you think if they were not free, would you get more participation? Or you like the fact that they're free and that everybody can just no, come? No, I like the fact that they're free okay. because it lets anybody come that wants to come. Okay. Uh, if we were charging for them, and we can use the money. <laughs> believe me, we can use the money. Uh, but I think in this market mm-hmm. that this is one of our ways of giving back is, is all this stuff is free. Our mentoring is always free. Uh, you know, you could. I tell a, a client, said you could theoretically meet with me every two weeks till the end of the year. Not that we necessarily would, but mm-hmm. you could, and it would never cost you a dime. Uh, Memphis, as we all know, is not the most prosperous city in the in the right, country. Right. And uh, there's fundamentally there's a, a a large poor population here mm-hmm. that if we can do something to help boost a little bit then we would consider it a privilege to be able to do that. And being able to offer these workshops for free, I think it's the right thing for the marketplace. Gotcha. I think some some score chapters do charge periodically, mm-hmm. but, you know, by doing it for free, you can come, you can not come, you can register. If you don't come when you register, it's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. You know, you get home after work and go, I'm tired, or the kids got homework, or I got to cook dinner. Oh, I forgot about going to the, you know, okay, that's fine. And we, we try to put all the visual presentation parts of the of the gotcha. workshops up online so that you can see them. You don't get the audio to go with it, but you get the the uh, slideshows to go with it, the, sure. the PowerPoint presentation. So For you sure. can at least go through and see the pertinent information that might be able to might be of some service to you. Gotcha, gotcha. Thank you for sharing that. So, you know, one thing that you, you you know, you kind of championed over and over in our conversation is that, like, mentors are really the backbone of score, backbone of score success, right? And so explain to Scar- Startup Nation, you know, how a score mentor can help. And also talk about that questionnaire you, you we were talking about offline a little bit about, you know, uh, once you go through the mentoring process, you get a questionnaire after that first meeting. Right. Well, mm-hmm. uh, we'll answer the second part first. Sure. Um, at the end of a meeting... We have a, a system uh, inside our website uh, that, that people can't. I mean, it just, it's just for score people. Mm-hmm. And uh, all of our clients are listed under our names. I can go to, to, to uh, my area of, this, of the site and see all of my clients. And I will go on there after a meeting and say, okay, I spent an hour and a half with such and such, and I'll, I will review the notes of what happened at the meeting. I say, I had a lovely meeting with so-and-so. We talked about this. We talked about that. We talked about the website. We talked about this. We talked about uh, they need to get this in place. They need to do that. They're going to call this. I'm going to let them know about this. I'm going to let them know about some resources we have. Mm -hmm. So that the next time we meet, I can call up and look at it and say, okay, I'm ready to go. Or if something were to happen to me where we needed to go with somebody else to go along with me, they could look at the notes and go, okay, I'm up to speed. Gotcha. 
the first after the first session, after I post that, then they automatically get emailed a questionnaire. And it's a short questionnaire. It, it can't take more than five minutes to fill out. And it's basically where you satisfied, you know, three or four questions. Were you satisfied with how things went? Did you get questions answered? That kind of thing. I encourage them to always answer it honestly. I said, you know, you, you can be smiling at me now. And you're going to walk out and say, I don't like that guy. <laughs> But I want you to tell me why. If you don't, if you like me, that's great. Tell me why. But if you don't like me, I didn't do the job for me. Tell me why, so right. I can get better. Right. I want to get better. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. want to keep doing things wrong if I'm if right. they're wrong. Right. So we do we do that little question. It only happens the first time, but but that's it. And because I blabbed, I forgot the first part of the question. Oh, just asking basically, you know. The, oh, how what a mentor. Yes. What yes. a mentor mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. um, okay, we start off. Let's go from the. You're, you're a, a business person and you want to get a mentor. Yes. Uh, I'll take you from that step, although I think I sort of did that before. Right. Uh, you would go to our, on our site and find a mentor. Uh, you can go on to score.org if you're someplace else and, mm -hmm. and put in general information, and then that will be sent to your closest chapter, and they will get in contact with right. you. But this goes to our administrator. He will look at it. He will send you a questionnaire back. That will be the basis for getting you assigned a mentor. Mm -hmm. uh, you will answer the you, know, you answer the question, send it back to him, and then they go, okay, this would be a good person, so-and-so would be a good mentor for this client. And basically, I try to do a little homework beforehand. I, if they have a website, I, I always contact people within a day of finding out that I have an assignment. Say, hey, thanks for choosing the score. Uh, I understand you're looking for some help. Let's get together. Let's let's talk about this. Tell me a little bit more about your business, or tell me a little bit more about what you're trying to get accomplished. Uh, do you have a website? Do you have other online information? Do you have a Facebook page I can look at? I want to be able to, to do homework and it, be as up to speed as I can. Mm -hmm. I try to do that homework. We get together, and then I basically throw the floor open to them. Okay. Tell me about things. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know what you wrote me. Now tell me about things in real life. And you know, if you are trying to start a business. Do you have a job right now? Are you ready to step away from that job? Mm -hmm. uh, do you have to have that job in order to have a roof over your head? I hear that. But always very encouraging. Mm -hmm. And I jot down notes because, again, basically I'm a reporter at heart. Gotcha. And I, I need to know, be, need to be able to refer to those things because sure. I might have a thought that, with you know, I'm 64. <laughs> the brain doesn't work as quickly as it used to in one ear and out the other. So I write down notes. They go, oh, ask about that or ask about that. Mm -hmm. And we just have a conversation. Uh, at the end of it, make sure that we've touched the bases we need to talk, uh, touch. And they always, always leave with homework because there are things that they haven't thought of or there are things that they know are the next steps that they have to get accomplished. Mm -hmm. Because for the most part, people are coming in and it's either a three-step, four-step, five-step process that they have to get to to get where they want to go, mm -hmm. but they're all down at the first step and they need to be able to climb up these steps. And gotcha. there, are, there are, I mean, it, it sounds like it's an organized thing and it's not. I mean, everybody is different. <laughs> right, right. But there are things that they have to be able to do to get where they want to go. For sure. You know, you can't say, I have an idea that I'm going to open a t-shirt shop and then tomorrow have a brick-and-mortar t-shirt shop. It doesn't gotcha. work that way. Right. So... I try to help them with here are the here are the steps as I see them where you need to go. Here's the next step. Here's the next step. After you get that done, you need to go here. Then let's talk about it and see where we are about doing that. Building that relationship, mm. making sure that they know. I'm, I mean, I'm I want everybody to succeed. I want. I, I've never yet had a client that said this person. I you know I hope they fail. I want them all to succeed. Some ideas are better than others, but I want every one of them to be able to fulfill their dreams. Right. And so that's and I, I hope that I exude that when I'm when I'm talking to them. Gotcha. And I think all of our mentors are that way. We have different personalities, clearly, but I think that that's uh, that's how you handle it. So you you're to me being encouraging but being real is important. I, I'm not going to blow smoke because. Again, we'll go back to the guy that wants to land on Mars. Well, mm -hmm. you are aware that no one's ever done that before, and there may be a reason for that. <laughs> right. Maybe a reason nobody's landed on Mars. Right. Well, yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Uh, so you, you, you're encouraging about things, but you're also making sure that they understand that, that this isn't just pie in the sky, that right. they're, this is a real thing and it's a living thing, and if you want to be able to do this, you have to be able to, to do this in a particular way. And in a particular number of steps 
to get things done. It may be it may be you have to put up silos, and here's something in, in silo one that I have to take care of, and silo two I have to take care of, and silo three, because sometimes it's there's so much. Mm-hmm. I had this with a particular client. There's so much that it's easy to get paralysis. For sure. And you end up at the end of the day going, I didn't get any of this accomplished. So I said, focus on small things you can do in each one of these things. And maybe you do two things in this today, but maybe you can do one in each. And pretty soon you're building up the level of where of the knowledge and the information you need and the, the duties or the tasks you need to get accomplished. Right. Without realizing it, after two weeks, you've done a whole lot just because you haven't let it overwhelm you. Got you. Got you. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. So when we talk about mentors, I would be remiss if I didn't mention uh, Dave Moreau. Uh, last year, uh, last summer, I believe, he, uh, he passed away, and he was one of SCORE's mentors. And uh, from everything that I've read about him, that he was just a phenomenal mentor there at SCORE. So my condolences to you and the SCORE chapter, but kind of talk about Dave's impact here in the city of Memphis and, and being a SCORE mentor. Okay, that's a good question. <laughs> I uh, I met Dave a couple of times. Okay. So I'm not really someone who can, you know, answer sure. it. I can tell you that the way people speak about Dave there, let's go there is way. that yeah. um, he was a terrific SCORE volunteer. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that there are still things that that are that are office related stuff mm-hmm. that we try to figure out well ha- who did that the answer usually it was Dave. Gotcha. We're still fi- you know finding out 8 months later mm-hmm. things that he was doing that nobody realized he was doing. Gotcha. And that is the 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 uh, to me that's that points to how important somebody is. For sure, uh, great guy. I met him once or twice, and he was. I feel so bad that we lost him. Mm-hmm. His family lost him, but <clears throat> a terrific guy. Gotcha, gotcha. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, I just wanted to kind of make sure we you know point that out and uh, how much the uh, score of mentor mentors are making an impact here in the city and the score chapter and stuff like that. So I appreciate that. So and always free. Yeah, uh, for always sure. free for sure for sure. <clears throat> Uh, and also, if you want to be a mentor with SCORE, they can go to the website as well? Yes, indeed. Okay. Yeah, there is a place on there you can you can uh, fill out a form to say, I'd like to be a, a volunteer. Mm-hmm. Uh, we actually have four levels of being a volunteer. And this is something that SCORE has just come up with in the last year or two. Okay. Uh, mentor, obviously, is number one. We have something called a, a subject matter expert. Mm. Uh, that is can sort of go between mentoring and workshopping. Uh, if you are really well-versed in a particular area, we may call on you to do things. You know, I, I okay, I have a client who needs some help in this. I know you're really good at this. Could you come into this particular session and sit down? You're not a mentor per se, but you're somebody who helps out on occasion. You ne- don't necessarily do workshops, but you might help do a workshop. Or you could do a workshop, but you are your knowledge is really narrow but really deep. Right. If that makes right. sense. No, that makes complete sense. Uh, then there is uh, people who do workshops, and then there's a general volunteer, and I don't mean to make that sound like it's menial at all. It's right. just it's being able to help where you're needed to. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't give any workshops. Uh, I don't think I know enough about anything to give a <laughs> workshop uh, other than, I don't know, fantasy baseball or golf <laughs> or something. But uh, but I'm, I try to always be there and help people register. Gotcha. And I do the introduction. I somehow end up doing the introduction because I'm so short on words, as you can tell. <laughs> but uh, I'm, that, I'm there to help, and mm-hmm. I want to help if I can. Uh, Arun does such a terrific job with the workshops. So I want to make sure that he has support. So sure. that your know, volunteers will do support. They'll do whatever's needed gotcha. to do that. We have a lunch. We have once a month a lunch, mm-hmm. and it just is. I don't mean to say it's a social event. It's it's a get together just to sort of exchange ideas. Sometimes we sure. have speakers. It just it's score uh, uh, volunteers. If we have people who are prospective volunteers, we always invite them to that to, to the the monthly lunch so they can get to know people. For sure. It's not a pressure thing at all. It's just being able to sit down and and talk. And we do business. We talk about the finances. We talk about what's up with the workshops. We talk about uh, what's up with marketing. Mm-hmm. And that's basically what we do. Other than that, if you want to be a volunteer, the time is yours. Uh, if you are going to mentor people, you might work a couple hours a month 
that might be it, two or three hours a month. Mm-hmm. And it's just a matter of, of, of you and your client hooking up, figuring out what's best, figuring out where to meet, and meeting. Right. And we have a, uh, an office, by the way, at Clark Tower. Okay. We just moved. We, we were on the 17th floor. Now we're on the fourth floor. Okay. Uh, but that's where we are. And we can meet there uh, when we were when the government was shut down mm-hmm. because we are technically part of the government. We, okay. we are under the umbrella of the Small Business Administration. Makes sense. Uh, we can do everything except go to the office. Gotcha. Could not go to the office. Gotcha. Uh, I do not drink coffee. I met clients at five different Starbucks. Okay. Which made me uncomfortable because I sort of felt like I had to buy something. Well, gotcha. that pound cake looks good. Let me have a piece of that pound cake. Uh, I met at two Paneras and and five Starbucks. Okay, I don't drink coffee, but it was it just happened to be a good place to meet. That's where people meet anymore. For sure, uh, I love to meet at Clark Tower. It's a quiet place. You can get away and talk and, mm-hmm. and do what you need to do. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we tell people when they're looking to get involved, uh, we can always use more knowledge. We can always use more mentors. And if you are interested in giving back, uh, really the time involved is small. I've gotten deeply involved. It is not three hours a month for me, <laughs> but and my, as my wife keeps pointing out, gotcha. uh, but it's uh, it's because I want to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's I really enjoy being involved with this group. But if if you have a client or two, you might you might send them a couple of emails and meet with them once in a month, and gotcha. that's it. Gotcha. So if you know if you're looking to give back. That's not much of a time thing at all. Right. You know, the onboarding process takes a little bit of time, but it's not. I mean, you could, if you started the onboarding process and finished it in a day-by-day thing, it might take you four or five days if you, you know, if you were really working at it to get it done. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Gotcha. And then it's it's just you and your clients. And if you want to come to the lunch, you come to the lunch. We're not pointing a gun at your head. <laughs> you can, uh, we hope you like us enough to come, come, back. come talk about things. Right. But, uh but it's you and the client. That's what's what's key is is how your relationship with your clients are. Gotcha, gotcha. Thank you for sharing that. Let's talk a little sports a little bit. Oh, uh, just a little bit. Um, so one of the things that we talk about on the startup life a lot is disruption and the entrepreneurial mindset, right? And, and so when I think about that, we always talk about like you know you can use the entrepreneurial mindset not necessarily to start a business but to scale your career or do some entrepreneurial venture, right? So when I think about our our new coach here at the University of Memphis, Penny Hardaway, uh, and we I've think heard of him, right, right, uh, and we talk about the way he does recruiting and stuff about like that. It's a little different than the the establishment does, right? And so he's kind of disrupting that recruiting space. So. Give us your take on that. Like, what do you feel about all of that? I thought it was a great hire. Okay. Uh, people talk about how he didn't come through the ranks the mm. way people are supposed to come through the ranks. Right. You know, but you look at some successful businesses right now. Right. The largest cab company in the world doesn't own a car. Nope. Not one. <laughs> the largest hotel brand in the world doesn't own a building. Right. Because life has changed. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think Penny knew what he was getting into when he said he was going to help the junior hire, the middle school coach that was a friend of right. his who got sick. For and, sure, and for sure. And eventually died. I don't think he, you know, he, I knew he was involved with the, with the uh, summer league stuff. For sure. But I don't think he knew what exactly he was getting into. He said, well, I can do this. You know, mm-hmm. sure. He's always had a good spirit about, about stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that it would be a great success story if he does well. Uh, we're going to find out next year mm-hmm. because now he's getting – he's had a full year to recruit. Right. He's bringing in this big kid from who he coached at, at East, mm-hmm. James Wiseman. Uh, he got some other kids coming in. He, he, he had a good, pretty good recruiting class this year. But it's a, it's a tough gig out there. Mm-hmm. You know, Josh Pastner was a terrific recruiter, and nothing seemed to happen after they got recruited. And right. for the most part, they left mm-hmm. after after. That. I don't think that's going to happen with Penny. He's able to sell. He has been. He's not been out of the public spotlight enough that people forget who he is. Right. And he was in the the news here for coaching at East. So locally, everybody knows Penny. Right. So he can get in with anybody. Not necessarily get everybody, but he can get in with anybody and right. talk. For sure. And nationally, people know who Penny is. 
And I think that is that is a disruptive force. And that's why you see some of these coaches starting to make comments about him, mm-hmm. like you know he didn't he didn't pay the dues or yada yada yada. Uh, he has also been smart enough to do something that Josh didn't do, which was bring in an X's and O's guy, in Sam Mitchell. Right. And you have guys who can draw plays if you if you are weak at that. You can make halftime changes if you it, you see them play a whole lot better in the second half sometimes than in the first half. Right. I think that he has a chance to do really well. And Memphis, Memphis needs the University of Memphis basketball program to be good for sure. Because when they're and you see attendance has dropped so severely mm-hmm. in the last five years before right. this year, they even though the Grizzlies have done so well and the Grizzlies have great following. At the heart of Memphis is the University of Memphis basketball program. It is, I think. It anyway. is. It is. And I, <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I've been. I moved here in 1985, mm-hmm. and I've been. I did sports for almost all that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, 23 years. And so I have a little feel for what's uh, what's going on. I'm sure, for sure people have have better feel than I do. For sure. But I think that that they made strides this year. I think he's disappointed with with how they've done at times. Mm-hmm. I think they've they've played better lately because they understand more about what he wants, and being able to get another year under his belt and getting this big kid in who right. everybody raves, James Wiseman, who right. everybody raves about. Uh, next couple of years going to be real interesting for sure. For I, sure. I'm glad he's here. I, I uh, I'm glad he didn't follow John Calipari. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tubby Smith was a great guy to follow. Right. Yeah, you know, nothing against Coach Smith because right. he was he's been a terrific coach. He oh, went for to sure. you know, a tournament with how many different teams? Six different colleges, yeah, seven he, different colleges. Something like that. This was the only one he didn't. Right. Uh but he just wasn't the right fit for Memphis. Right. He may have been the right fit for Kentucky or Minnesota or Texas Tech or the mm-hmm. various places he coached. Not for Memphis. It's a different place. You, right. you, you're here. Absolutely. You understand Memphis Absolutely. is a different just kind a, of just place. A different type of place. Uh, John Calipari and I had a discussion one time about recruiting, mm-hmm. about recruiting in Memphis specifically. Okay. And we agreed, and I don't remember whether he brought it up or I brought it up, but we both had the thought, and we both agreed when we, when, when the one said it that you can only hide, you can only recruit. Two kinds of kids in Memphis. Okay. You either recruit the best player on the team or a guy at the end of the bench. You can't recruit anybody in between because they all have their groups with them mm. and they're all, you know, man, he's not doing you right. He's you, know, you want to be playing more. Why aren't you shooting the ball more? Right. You know, and, and <laughs> in the neighborhoods and in the you know, the high schools, you go back and see your high school guy, what's going on? You're not getting treated right. If you're the number one guy, it doesn't matter. Right. If you're the fifteenth guy, it doesn't matter. Mm. In between, it matters, and it can be a disruptive influence. He For said, sure. "Yeah, that's why, that's why I've had to go out nationally because he he recruited nationally in a right. big way. For sure, uh, because that was, you know, if people come to Memphis, it doesn't matter. But if you're in Memphis, um, I had a guy call me a quick story uh, when I was a sports editor, and it was a it was the year that Dwan Wagner was here, mm-hmm. and the point guard on that team was Antonio remember. Burks. That's right." And uh, I got a call from a guy, and sometimes as a sports editor, people thought you were talk radio. Right. So you know, I, I have to tell them, I, you're not on the air, sir. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> you're talking to a guy who's just responding to you. And he he told me that Calipari was was doing Burks wrong because Burks was more talented than Dwan Wagner. Okay. I said you do know that Dwan Wagner scored like a hundred points in a high school game. And that he can score from anywhere, and he's going to go in the first round of the NBA draft. Yeah, but if Burks had those opportunities, he would be, he'd be doing those things too. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's how people felt feel about the kids here. They all right. have their their personal right. you know, kid that they've hung around with forever, mm-hmm. and they want to see them do well. And they think that that they're if they're not the star of the team, they're getting right. the short end of the stick for sure. So, so John decided. Yeah, let me go to North Carolina <laughs> and let me go to you know all these different places that he recruited out of, and he did very well. But there's so much talent in town, mm-hmm. you know. And if Penny can get half the best players in town and get two or three kids from around the country every year, people are going to be really upset 
out, gotcha. out the college world because sure. he's going to be he's going to turn the program around for sure. Well, like, I wanted to ask you that question because, like you know, we talked about the entrepreneurial mindset and businesses, and you're absolutely right. A lot of times when you enter into a marketplace or you didn't come up the ranks like how most people do, right? Like you kind of ruffle some feathers a little bit, right? And I think the same can be said if you're starting a business or like going up. Uh, a corporate ladder in a company and stuff like that. So I just kind of wanted to get have a little fun think, with you about that. I think that. if you to to relate back to the topic, yeah, yeah, uh, that don't be afraid to try to do things differently. For sure, you know you have to. Very rarely will you end up in a business that nobody else is doing. Right. You just right. think that you can do a particular thing better, better. than other people. Right. Mm-hmm. So to do it better than other people, you have to figure out a way to set yourself off. And stand above the crowd, mm-hmm. and if and that's a question I ask sometimes. Okay, well, there are a million of these particular company A widget company uh, out there. Tell me how you're going to make better widgets, or tell me why your company is going to be better, or why you know. Well, my customer service will be better. <laughs> okay, well, tell me it, how does that right happen? I mean, right. well, what, you're talking about customer like? service. Yeah. What does it look like? Right, and then they go, well, it'll just be better. Okay, well, come back. Let's talk again in a couple weeks and hear some things. And I want, you need to have a better idea. Come up with a better plan for how it's going to be better because that's what's going to set you apart. Right. You know, you're, uh, I had a client who, and I, I, I shouldn't talk about what it was. And I don't remember exactly what it was anyway. Mm-hmm. But there was something about something he made that was, I went through his website and buried like on the fifth page was something that really intrigued me about the process mm-hmm. that nobody else was doing. Right. And but the first four pages of the website were all just generic, here's what I do and you know, here are the various entities of what I do. Right. And when we talked again, I said, That right there on page five is what you should be trumpeting. Everybody does this. Mm-hmm. You do this. Right. But right. Yeah, I see okay. what you mean. Gotcha, gotcha. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. So you you talk about you know you're you know, not necessarily being a traditional entrepreneur yourself or a case may be. But I beg to differ because you talked about diving into podcasting a little bit. You know, in our conversation before, tell me a little bit about that. We did uh, some very primitive podcasting. Okay. Uh, when I was the sports editor uh, back around two thousand and three, may have been even earlier than that. Uh, with very simple microphones, little stick microphones, and recorded it into my computer, and I didn't do much editing. Uh, We always were one-take podcasts. Gotcha. Uh, But I would bring in uh, our columnist, Jeff Calkins, to talk Mm -hmm. about things. I would bring in our beat writer for the Grizzlies, Ron Tillery. Mm -hmm. I would bring in Gary Parrish, who was covering the Tigers at the time, and Phil Stukenborg, who was covering Tiger football at the time, and just spend five minutes... Uh, talking about it. now, podcasts have exploded. Now you know we we've talked for thirty or forty five <laughs> minutes here. I don't know. Yeah, you know, we're I'm gonna put people to sleep all over the country. Not I'm at afraid. all. Not at all. But these were five or ten minute things that uh, that were just additional content. You talked. Mm-hmm. We were talking about off the air about content. Right. Well, this is just additional content. Right. And we and I posted it on. We had a, a blog site called the Memphis Edge, and it was just it was sort of beyond the scope of just stories. Right. And if you had stuff that that you had filled up in your notebook and you didn't have a place to put it. Mm. Well, write four paragraphs about it. And we always posted the podcast there. And so you could go there and you could get a different kind of take, a different kind of spin on things you were interested in. Right. Um, And then I did, um, when I got into the digital side, I did with Jason Smith, your mm-hmm. your uh, your buddy, mm-hmm. and uh, John Martin, who now have a very successful radio show. Right. I was the original producer. Okay, I keep giving Jason okay. grief about that. <laughs> going, you know, couldn't, couldn't you you have me on the show one time? You know, you help help a guy out a little bit. He's probably going to hear this. So. Yeah, well, that's good, Jason. You and I have talked about that. <laughs> but uh, he and John would we'd go up at the up in the fifth floor, and there was a, a studio up there. And basically, again, it was just my laptop. I had my laptop out, and mm-hmm. we had the microphones out, and they did it in one take. And we did it. We we talked for it was a thirty minute thing. Gotcha. And they would talk, and uh, I had nothing. I was just the producer. I wasn't doing. I wasn't introducing them. It right. was just you know, hey, it's Jason and John. And we're talking about Tiger basketball, and it was well received. 
Gotcha. Uh, I mean, those things are kind of hard to to uh, to analyze in terms of sure. of uh, how often they're being listened to. Right. At least back then they were. Gotcha. But I like to think I was the beginning of uh, of the Jason and John show way back before they were Jason and John as we now know them. I hear that. I hear that. Like I said, I think, you know, that's like once again speaks to the entrepreneurial mindset that you kind of, you know, decided to kind of do that. And I think that's interesting for Startup Nation to know to where you have content that you can repurpose in other places because content marketing is extremely important. Yes, indeed. In, in, in entrepreneurship and getting the word out there and stuff like that. You want to add something? The more the more you have to promote, and a lot of that is just content for sure. The better off you're going to be, and and the more if you have a website and you you can write a blog a week or you can write uh, get put testimonials on anything as content. You know, do videos, anything you can add on that that people will learn something from uh, and give them a reason to come back, mm-hmm. you should be able to do. And I, I, again, I, I said this uh, a while ago that mm-hmm. people, you know, I have to have a website. I have a business. People said I have to have a website. So I got a, a website. Well, I haven't looked at it in a while. No, you have to <laughs> spend time with it. It's right. your buddy. And that's that's where you know people are going to find out about you because they're not going to if you have a brick and mortar store, how many people are, are a driving by and b driving by with their head turned to see what it's actually in that that strip center? Mm-hmm. Uh, the website is your is your window to the world. Gotcha, gotcha. Thank you for sharing that. So one of the things we we ask on the startup life, and we're almost finished by the way. I don't take sure. too much of your time. Uh, one of the things we ask on the startup life is we ask, what are your entrepreneurial superpowers? So as a mentor <laughs> for Score, what's your mentor superpower? Superpower. Yeah. I didn't bring my cape in here. I left <laughs> it in the car. Um, my superpower is asking questions. I hear that. Um, that's what I do, mm-hmm. and I think that 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 helps people grow stronger mm-hmm. because you come to see me, you have this idea, you don't talk to anybody about it, okay? You have this idea to start the dominant company, right. okay? And you have all these great ideas, and you may have things written down in a notebook, but maybe not. Maybe it's just in your head, and it's just roiling around, and you don't talk to anybody about it. Well, I'm somebody to talk to, mm-hmm. and when... You give voice to that idea, that. it sounds differently, and because I'm going to ask you questions about it, you're going to learn more about it. And it's just going to make you stronger and make your resolve stronger because I'm asking questions about it. And I feel like I'm patting myself on the back about that, but it's, it's I mean, it's, it's key right? because being able to, I've had a lot of clients say, this is the first time I've talked about it to anybody, mm-hmm. and it sounds different. When it's coming out of your mouth. Goodness knows, this sounds different coming out of my mouth. (laughs) But it sounds different coming out of your mouth. And you hear things that you didn't realize were were part of the idea. Right. One of the things that I work with people on, you've heard of elevator pitches, obviously. Yes, absolutely. I heard this at the National Leadership Convention, that a guy tells a client that he wants the client to put together his, his entire plan... In 75 words, tell them exactly what the business is all about in 75 words. Mm -hmm. The reason it's 75 words is that's the length of a 30-second radio spot. Okay. Okay? If you can't do it in 75 words, then you are not focused on what you're trying to get accomplished. You don't necessarily know, or maybe you're focused on too many different things and you need to hone it in and get focused on something. Okay. But 75 words is a great test to figure out where you are where your focus is and he said after that then we may, I make him do it in 25 which is a really fast elevator pitch for sure but being able to do that and I heard I had a client come in and say well this is what my business is and and I it was it was maybe 50 words I would knock me over with a feather because you got this down you have you know exactly what your business is all about mm-hmm. A lot of times, and this is why we're here, is to help them get along. A lot of times they don't know exactly what their business is. It's a thought. It's a passion of what they can do. Mm -hmm. They haven't figured out exactly what it is yet. You know, I could do this, I could do this, and then we're going to do this. No. Okay, let's focus on something small and then grow. So figure out what that small thing is, and let's 
build out from that. I hear that. I hear that. Thank you for sharing that. And before I ask my last question, Gary, I just want to say once again, thank you so much for coming on Startup Life. You've been a blast. And I really think that your your experience in uh, in sports editing and in, in the paper business and stuff like that has really proven valuable to entrepreneurs here in the city of Memphis. So I am very grateful. Well, thank you very that. much. That's very kind of you. I swear. I, I've I swear. really enjoyed being here. I, 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 I get revved up talking about score. I For really sure. do. I can and tell. I, 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 I can grew tell. up in New Jersey. I talk kind of fast sometimes. <laughs> I don't have. It's not all southern. I've been in the south a long time, but it's not all southern. But I get. Uh, I get. I get juice talking about score because I really, really like the. I like the group. I like the the mission, which is to foster a vibrant small business community through mm-hmm. mentoring and and education. Gotcha. That's what the mission is. Very simple. The twenty five word thing. Absolutely. That's what we do. And it's very, that's exactly what we do. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. So, Gary, if I could, I'm going to actually give the microphone to you. There's an entrepreneur out there who who's feels stuck in their business. They don't know how to move forward. Or they're afraid to start their company and they don't know how to move forward. Give them a little bit of motivation today to, to kind of help them do that. I wasn't expecting that. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is going to require some editing, I suspect. It's all good. Uh, I'll take care it's, of all, it. it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Dominic says it's all good. It must be all good. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. If you are stuck in something you don't want to do, what does it hurt to try something else? I mean, clearly, you need a roof over your head. Clearly, you'd like to eat two or three square meals a day. I understand that. But it doesn't mean that you can't be working on the side to put something together to do something that's a passion for yourself. Okay? If you have a hobby that you see other people making businesses out of, maybe it's something you can do too. Take small steps. Never lose sight of the focus of creating that thing. Then, as each day goes along, you're able to see the things you're, you're creating. Come to SCORE. Find other uh, help. Uh, Tennessee Small Business, uh, mm-hmm. Tennessee Small Business uh, Development, Development Center. Center. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for that. No worries. Is another great resource to go to. We have great resources to look at on our website, memphis.score.org or just score.org. Go uh, check the library out, and you can put a search in there, how to build a business plan, how to build a marketing plan, and you'll find five, six, eight, ten different things. You'll find webinars that you can watch that will will help get you inspired. Don't be afraid to try things. Make sure you don't jump too fast, but make sure you're ready to jump when the time is there to jump. I hear that. I hear that. And that's going to wrap up this session of the Start of Life brought to you by the Binge Podcast Network. How did you like being on the show, Gary? Oh, it was terrific. I hope you'll have me back, but absolutely, it'll take you a while to get through this, I'm sure. No, it's all good. This could be two or three podcasts. It might be. It might be. All right, Startup Nation. So here's my final take. A lot of times when we jet off on that path of entrepreneurship, we think that we're by ourselves. You know, a lot of times it really is us who's, you know, trying to figure out the game plan, trying to figure out the path forward. But what Gary shows us is that you have organizations like SCORE that are out there to help you. And really, you shouldn't be afraid to ask for that help. Nobody builds anything great by themselves. So if you find yourself you know, ready to really scale your business or to really get it off the ground, make sure you talk to Gary and the good people at SCORE to help you get on the right path. If you want to let us know what you think about the show, have an idea for a show topic, or like to advertise on our show, please send us a message on the Startup Life Podcast Facebook page. And while you are there, like and follow our page as well. It's a way for us to engage with you, Startup Nation, and really grow our community. The link is here in the show notes. Subscribe to the show as can be now be heard on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, or whatever your favorite platform to get your podcast on. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts and you find our content valuable, please give us a five-star rating as it will help us climb the charts and help more people find our show. Also, don't forget to sign up for the Startup Life All Access Pass to get exclusive content. This is exclusively on the Bench Podcast Network's Patreon page. And hey, if you have an idea, be about that life, the Startup Life.